Hey everyone, welcome to another session of some Razzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about distance time graphs. Before we start that, let's first of all have a recap about speed and velocity. So speed is defined as the distance divided by time. But what exactly is velocity then? Well, velocity is simply the displacement divided by the time. So, speed is distance over time, velocity is displacement over time. Speed is a scalar quantity. Yeah, we've got another video which talks about scalar and vector quantities. Make sure you check that out. And velocity is going to be a vector quantity. So, scalar quantities, if you've forgotten, has a size only. But the vector quantities have size and direction. Okay, so we now know the difference between speed and velocity. Right, let's look at a distance time graph. Let's say we have the following distance time graph, and someone says to you, describe the motion of this, this object. Let's just say it's a car moving along a road. So here's my car. Yeah, it's moving along a road here. Right, so describe how the motion of the car is changing. Right, we can see that as time goes on, first of all, its speed, yeah, it's starting to gain some speed. So this part over here, it's going to be uniform speed. Oops, the wrong one. I don't know why that's occurring. So this one is going to be uniform speed. Because it's traveling a distance in a certain time. But what's going on with the horizontal part of the graph? What's the object doing? Well, it, for every second that goes on, the object is not increasing in distance. Therefore, it is not moving. So this bit means the object is not moving. So if you're given a distance time graph, the diagonal bit means there's a, it's moving at a constant speed or uniform speed, and the horizontal part means it's not moving at all. That's only for a distant time graph. Right, so let's scroll down for another one. Uh, how can we calculate the speed from a distance time graph? So let's say we have a distance time graph as shown. How can we work out the speed? Right. We can work out the speed by looking at the gradient. So if we look at the gradient of the line, the gradient of any line is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. Yes, the rate of change of y divided by the change in x. So let's work at the gradient. Let's drop, let's, so let's pick two points on our line. So here we go. Let's put start and end here. So we have to draw the, the triangle when we're calculating the gradient. So that line going down, that line going across, yeah, it's not that great, but obviously I'll just highlight it over here, so I've dropped this line over there. So what is the y value changing? The changing from uh, 0, so this is obviously 0, so it's going to be 6 minus 0, so my change in y, and the x value is still 6 minus 0. Therefore, it's 6 over 6, it's 1 meters per second. So, if you're given a distance time graph, yeah, distance time graph, to work out the speed, you work out the gradient. So the key thing to take home is the gradient represents the speed. Easy stuff and you use your math skills to work out the gradient of the graph. Well, what about if I have a displacement time graph? How can we calculate the velocity? Well, look carefully. We, we know velocity is the displacement over time. So if I work at the gradient, yeah, so if I work at the gradient of this line over here, gradient is equal to the change in y over the change in x, which is the displacement over the time. So let's work out, let's pick two points once again. Let's go for these two points here. You can pick any two points along the line. I've picked these two, they're easiest to measure. I know the change in y over here and the change in x over there. So the change in y is going from 0 to 6, so 6 minus 0. The change in x is going from 0 to 7, so 7 minus 0, so that's a 7 there. Here we go, that's a 7 over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's y. So therefore the gradient of the line is going to be 6 divided by 7, 6 divided by 7, it's going to be 0 0.86 meters per second. So the gradient of the line tells me the velocity. So gradient tells me the velocity. Okay, so just recapping that a uh, bit above, if I have a distance time graph, the gradient is the speed. If I have a displacement time graph, 
the gradient is the velocity. Yeah, easy stuff. Now, scrolling down, test your understanding. So calculate the velocity of the car with this displacement time graph. So let's say you're given this graph, you're asked to calculate the velocity. Well, we know to calculate the velocity, it is simply the gradient. Okay, so work out the gradient of the graph. So let's pick two points. Let's go for this one over here and this one over here. The gradient of this triangle. So it's going to be the change in y divided by the change in x. The change in y is going to go from 8 minus 0. Yes, the change in y. This value is 8. That's still 0 on the side of here. And the x value is going to be 4. 4 minus 0. So therefore, it's going to be 8 divided by 4. It's going to be 2 meters per second. Easy stuff. So if somebody gives you a displacement time graph, calculate the velocity by looking at the gradient. Next of all, summary. The gradient of the distance time graph represents the speed. The gradient of a displacement time graph represents the velocity. To work out the speed, it is simply the distance over the time. To work out the velocity, it is simply the displacement over the time. And obviously, the gradient of any line in mathematics is going to be the change in y divided by the change in x. And that's it for today's session. I shall see you next time for more cool physics. Goodbye.